We'll begin the Gemara today on Pe'ala from Midbeis, about 10, 15 lines into the Amud, where it says, Hahu Gavra. So the Gemara brings a story, Hahu Gavra, the Nafl Le'yevame Bepumpadisa. This individual, his brother died without children, so now he has the mitzvah of Yibum, and this is a story that happened in Pumpadisa. So what happened? This is so the, the who's the one that has the mitzvah of Yibum, the oldest brother. Now, boy, Yahua lemifsalah begitamine. One of the other brothers wanted to make sure that the oldest brother will not do Yibum. So how is he going to prevent them from doing Yibum? He's going to give a get to this Yivama. And when you give a get, the halacha is that you can't do Yibum anymore. Rashi brings, we learned this in the Gemara and Yivamas. Once you do chalitza, minatayri, you can't do Yibum anymore. But midrabanan, even if you only give a get, if any of the brothers gave a get, so you can't do the mitzvah of Yibum anymore. Why did he want to do this? So Amalei, the oldest brother, tells his brother, My daitech, what are you thinking? Why do you want to stop me from doing Yibum? Is it because of the money? In other words, the halacha is that the Yavam yarshins all the properties, all the money from the brother. If he does the Yibum, he gets everything. But if you're going to do Chalitza, so he doesn't get all the properties, then you just split it amongst all the brothers. Or if you give a get and you can't do Yibum, so then you split everything between all the brothers. So he tells him, Ano benichsi palig nalach. I will divide the properties with you, don't worry. I want to have the mitzvah of Yibum as far as the money and the properties are concerned. I'll divide it with you. And he made a kinyan for what he said that he's going to divide it with him. Now, the question becomes here, does this Yavam have the right to divide these properties that he got from his brother? Is it even his yet? He didn't even marry this Yavama yet. Not only that, as we learned before, all of these properties that he gets from the brother, from the first husband, are all meshuba to the ksuba. Does he have the right to go and make a chalukah and say that I'm going to give another brother a half of this? Amar Rav Yosef, so Rav Yosef said, Kivin da Amar because the Rabbanan said, Loi Lisbon, that a Yavam does not have the right to sell the properties of his brother when he's waiting, when his wife is waiting for Yibum. She's not his wife yet, when the Shemeris Yavam is waiting for Yibum. So therefore, even if he did go ahead and sell, even with the Yavad, the sale will not take effect. The Tanya, as it says, when a person died, he had no children, and he leaves his wife, which is waiting for Yibum. He left enough properties in the value of a hundred mana. Even though the value of the Ksube is only one mana, the brother, the Yavam, does not have the right to sell any of these properties. All of the properties coming from the first husband are there, they're, they're, they're obligated for this ksuba. Yeah, so therefore, what Rav Yosef is saying is, not only lechatchile should he not sell, but even if he did sell, bidiyeve, the sale doesn't take effect. And therefore here, when this brother told his brother, I'm going to split with you all the properties, and he made a Kenyan for that, it, it, even bidiyeve, it doesn't take effect. Is it true that any time that Rabbanan said, Loy Lisbon, that a person is not allowed to sell these properties, do we say that Afagav Dezovin Loyavis Vinis Vini, that even after the fact, if you went and sold it, that the sale doesn't take effect, even with the Yevet, it doesn't take effect? So the Gemara asks from the first Mishnah on our Pedic. But now, in the first Mishnah, it's also discussing over there regarding a wife whether when she brings in Nikhse Malog, whether she's allowed to go and sell any of these properties. The husband eats the fruits, could she sell it? So what did it say in the Mishnah? Even after Edison, she's still allowed to sell these properties. Basil says she can't sell any of these properties. But Elu Veilu Maidim, they both agree, Sheim Machra Nasna, if she sells and she gives it as a gift, Kaya, the sale takes effect. So therefore, Abai is asking Rav Yosef, why not say the same thing over here? Even if the Yavim is not allowed to sell these properties that came from his brother, but nevertheless, maybe with the Yavid, if he told his brother, I'm going to split it with you, it should take effect. They, add, they sent this question to ask Rav Hanina Bar Papi what he thinks about this. So Sholcho Kid Rav Yosef, he sent back the Psaq like Rav Yosef said, that he doesn't have the right to sell it, and even with the Yavid, the sale doesn't go through. Amar Abaye, so when Abaye saw that he gave the Psaq like Rav Yosef, but he said, how, how, why should I accept this? Otu Rav Hanina Bar Papi, Kipi Tolala. Rav Hanina Bar Papi, when he gave his Psaq, did he hang uh, Kipi to this? Kipi Rashi says means like kinds of jewelry, meaning did he adorn his Psaq with a reason? 
He didn't give a reason to this psak. He's saying the same psak as Rav Yisuf without any reason. But I have a question on this. So then, So they sent the same shayla to Rav Yisuf Bered Rav Nechumi. So he sent back the psak din like a baye, that after the fact, once the brother said that he's going to split it with his brother, so it does take effect. But then he also said, If Rav Yosef gives another reasoning for his psak, send it to me, I want to know what Rav Yosef's reasoning is, why he says that even Bidiyeva, the, 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 if he split it with his brother, it should not take effect. Okay, so what happened? Norfak Rav Yosef. Rav Yosef went out and he went to, 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 to think about this and to try to find a source for his psak din. Doc, and he, was, he searched in Vashkach and he found a braise. Tanya, there's a braise that says, A person was collecting, or he, wanted, he needed to collect a loan that his brother owed him. Umais, and now he passed away. He passed away without children. So the brother that he wanted to collect the loan from is the one that has to do the mitzvah of Yibum. So now he leaves his wife. She's anticipating Yibum from this brother that owed him the money. So now this brother inherits all the properties from his brother that passed away. He owed his brother money, but he's the one that yarshins everything. So now, what would he, what would he think to say? So the Gemara says, Lo yoimar, He should not say, Hoyel v'shani yoirish. Since I'm the one that's inheriting everything from my brother anyways, so exactly. So therefore the loan that I owe him, I can keep it. It's mine to keep. Ella, what we do is, might see in me Yavam, that money that he owed, we take it out from him. And then that money, we, we, what we do is, we yikach ben karka, you have to buy a piece of land. And then that piece of land becomes meshubit to the ksube. And the hu And this Yavam could only eat from the fruits. So what do you see from this Braise? Even a loan that he owed, and he already has it in his possession, we take it away from him. Why? Because we say everything that belonged to the brother that the Yavam gets is, is going to be Meshubah to the Ksubah. He doesn't have a right to keep it. If we say such a thing regarding a loan that he already has in his possession, for sure we should say that even Bidiyeved, after he sells it, or after he wanted to split it with his brother in this case, the Bidiyeved, it doesn't go through. Over here, this is Bidiyeved. He already has that loan, that money. It's, it's in his possession. And still, we take it out from him. So this is a source for what Rav Yasef said. Amalei Abaye, so Abaye said, no, there's no raya from this b'raise. Dilme the tovle of delay. Maybe over there, it's not the halacha that he must pay back, but the Braith is just giving him good advice that you want to make sure that you have this money that you owed your brother, and you're going to keep this money now for yourself. What's going to happen? You're going to spend that money, and maybe you won't ever have enough money to pay the ksuba for this yivama. So it's giving him good advice and saying, if you have that money that you owe your brother, buy a piece of property with it, and you can eat the pay this, but the piece of property will always be available for the ksuba. So it's just good advice. Amalei, so Rav Yosef says to Abaye, Tane, Tani, Maitzian. The Tana, the expression the Tana uses is, we take out, we take out this money from him. Va'at Amr is a tavalei of delay. And you're saying this is just good advice that we're giving him. If it's only good advice, the Bryce wouldn't use such a strong expression, Maitzian, that we take the money out of his, out of his possession. So, Nahada, Shalchua, Kamei, the Rav Minyaymi, Birei, the Rav Nechumi. So they sent this Bryce, to Rav Minyaymi, Rav Minyaymi said, if Rav Yosef has any other reason to back up his opinion, send it to me, I want to know. So they send it to him. Amar lohu, so now Rav Minyaymi said, Hachi Amar Rav Yosef Bar Minyaymi. Rav Yosef Bar Minyaymi said, Amar Rav Nachman, in the name of Rav Nachman, Zu ain't a Mishnah. This Braise is not a Mishnah, meaning it's not acceptable, there's a mistake in this Braise, and you can't rely on it. So the Gemara now asks, my timer, what's the reason, what's the mistake that it says in this Braise? If you're going to say that the mistake over here is This loan that this Yavam owed his brother has the halacha of metaltalin. Even though usually or many times a loan you collect with karka, many time you owe money, the karka is the land, becomes meshuba to the loan, but a person usually pays a loan with money. So therefore when we're talking here about this loan, we consider it to be metaltalin. We know that metaltlin, any movable items, are not subjugated for the payment of the ksube. So if so, how does this price to say that this loan that he owed his brother, that he has to give it back in order to buy a karka, that it should be meshuba to the ksube? If it's metaltlin, it's not meshuba to the ksube. So just let him keep it. That's the question on this price. Says the Gemara, that's not a question. Maybe the Tana of this price is Rabmeir. 
The Omar, Rav Meir's opinion is, Metaltali, Meshabi Luxuba, that Metaltalin does become Meshuba to Luxuba. So that maybe, so we don't pass like Rav Meir, but maybe that's the uh, opinion of the Tan and Isbraisa. And Ela says the Gemara, there's another question on this Braisa. Because when this Yavam, you're telling the Yavam that he has to return the money for, to be available for her Ksuba and then to buy a piece, of, a piece of land and he'll be able to eat the fruits from it. But the husband, the, the new the Yavam now could say, At la didiyat. You're not the person that I owe the money to. Why should I pay the money back now to make it available for your ksuba? As long as my brother was alive, I owed him the money. I borrowed the money from him. I have to pay him. But if he passed away and he has no Yarshim, I'm the Yarish. So who am I paying the money back to? Why should I pay back the money to subjugate the money for the ksuba if the Isha that's getting this, I'm not, uh, I, I never borrowed money from her. I borrowed money from my brother. Says the Gemara, wait a minute. That's also not a mistake. Dilme Rab Maybe this Braisa follows the opinion of Rab Tanya, we learned, Rav Nassim, Naim Rav Nassim says, Minayin mana. How do you know in a case when you're collecting a mana from your friend? And then your friend owes a mana to someone else. Meaning, so Reuven is collecting money from Shimon, and Reuven also owes money to Levi. So now instead of Shimon paying the money to Reuven, Shimon can pay directly to Levi. It doesn't have to go to the person in the middle, but it can go directly to the person, the final person that the money really comes to him. So how do we know? So you take it from the, the person that owes the money to the final person that he's, he's the one that really has to get the money. You don't have to give it to the person in the middle. Talmud Laima, you learn from the Apostlech says, V'nosan, you pay up a loan. Who do you pay it to? La'asher osham loy. To the one that you're guilty to him, meaning the one that this money really belongs to. It doesn't say the one that's trying to collect the money from you, not necessarily is the one trying to collect the money from you where the money is going to end up. You have to give it to the final person where the money is going to end up. So therefore over here, the husband can't say, this Yavam that is, can't say to this Isha, I don't owe you the money because I never borrowed you the money. True, you owe the brother the money and the brother owed her the, uh, the money. The brother owed her money for the Ksuba. So therefore we say, give the money directly for the Isha that it should be Meshuba to the Ksuba. That's uh, the, the concept of Rav Nassim. The husband is talking out alive, but it goes directly to the Isha. So as the Gemara, so what's the, pr the problem with this Braise? Ella, the reason why he said that the Rav Nachman said that this Braise is not correct, because Loi Tana, we never find a Tana, the Machmer Terei Chumri Biksube. That is stringent regarding the Ksube. So Rashi says here the Gemara is going according to the opinion that the Ksube is only with the So we don't find the Tana that when it comes to the Ksube, which is only with the Rabbanon, that applies two stringencies to the Ksube. Both the, the stringency of Rab Meir, that you can collect the Ksube even from a Taltalin, and the stringency of Rab Nasan, that you can use the collection of the Ksube even from a person that doesn't directly owe it to the Isha, but indirectly with the Halach of Rab Nasan. Ella, what we find is Iker Rav Meir, or we apply the stringency of Rav Meir to collect from the Taltlin, Iker Rav Nasan, or the stringency of Rav Nasan. But one Braise that should have both stringencies together by a Ksube, which is Midr that's a Chiddush that we don't find anywhere, and therefore Rav Nachman says this Braise is a mistake. So you can't bring any Raya from this Braise. Omarave, so Rav says, in Kain Haina de Shemaina Leila Abaye de Omar, this is the Pshat and what I heard that Abaye said, Zu Eine Mishnah. That this Braise is not a Mishnah, meaning it's not acceptable, there's a mistake here. I didn't know what's the reason why this Braise, the halach of this Braise, is not true. But now I know that the reason is because this Braise is way too machmer when it comes to the halach of Aksobe, which is only Midr Abbanam. So, here there's another story where basically the same thing happened. Ahu Gavre, there was a person, the Nafalei of Amr Bimasa Machasya. So his brother passed away, and now he has the mitzvah of Yibum, and this story takes place in Masa Machasya. So now Ba'achua lemifsula begitamine. Again, one of the younger brothers, the Bukhair, the oldest brother has a mitzvah of Yibum. One of the younger brothers wanted to give a get to the Yivama to passel her from the from the mitzvah of Yibum. Amalei, so the older brother says to him, My daiter, what are you thinking? Is it because you don't want me to inherit all the money, you want to split it. So if so, don't worry, I'll split the money with you, you don't have to worry about this. Malay, so this younger brother was aware of the previous story that we just learned that happened in Pompadisa. And over there, what, what, what ended up happening in that story, apparently what ended up happening is, this brother had said to his younger brother, I'm going to split it with you. But then he went and did the mitzvah of Yibum, and he never split it with his brother. He kept all the money for himself. 
Amalei, so the younger brother says, Mr. Fina, I'm afraid, the other sleek of it, Pumpadi Sarama. I'm afraid you're going to do like that uh, Ramai, that thief in, in Pumpadisa that kept the money for himself. <laughs> right, so Taisus Ovi explains, why is the Gemara calling him a Ramai? We had before Rav Yosef. Rav Yosef Paskins, that even after he told him that, he can, uh, that, 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 he, that he's going to give him half of the money, it doesn't take effect. He doesn't have the right to do that. So why is he a Ramai? That was the Psak Din of Rav Yosef. But Taisu <coughs> says he didn't do so because of the Psak Din of Rav Yosef. Because even after Rav Yosef gave the Psak Din, there was a whole question about it. He just did it because he was a Ramai. So therefore, he says, I don't want you to treat me like that Ramai in the story in Pumpadisa. So he says to his younger brother, you know what, I'll tell you even more. If you want, you can split it, make a Kenyan right now, go make a Chazake on the portion of the properties that you want, and you, your Kenyan should be a Kenyan from now. So, that, so the question is, does this brother, the, the oldest brother, the Yovam, have the right to split it and tell the younger brother, make a Kenyan from now. I mean, now the Yovam doesn't even own it yet. It's, it's before, but he's telling him, make the Kenyan now, and then later when I'm Yabim, and then I own the money, so I will say that retroactively the Kenyan you made before will take effect that you'll be able to have it. So, Amma Baravashi, so Ma Baravashi says, this doesn't work. Because, ah, Fagav Dichiyah said, Rav Dimi, Amma Rav Yechenen, when Rav Dimi came, Rav Dimi said, in the name of Rav Yechenen, the following Allah. A person tells his friend, Go and make a Kenyan, the Kenyan of Meshiche, where you pull the potty, you take it into your property with this cow. But the Kenyan should not take effect. Only after 30 days. So the Allah is, So after 30 days, the, the person that made the Kenyan, the Kenyan will take effect. Even if at that point, the Meshicha that he did before, that he put, put, pulled it into his property, so it's not in his property anymore, it's just out in the swamp somewhere, it's out in, the, in a public place. But nevertheless, because he made the king before, so the king will take effect. But the Gemara explains, over there it takes effect, but not over here with the Yava. Why? They were talking about a person that's the owner of the cow presently. So he has the power to sell it to him today. So therefore he can tell him, make the king today, and the king will take effect in 30 days. But over here, this Yavam doesn't own it yet. He didn't get it yet. So therefore, how could he go and tell his brother, make a Kenyan and the Kenyan will take effect when I marry my Yavama and then I yash and everything, then it will take effect. But today you don't own it yet. How could you sell what you don't own? But now the Gemara asks on what Mar Baravashi quoted in the name of Rav Yechenen. When Ravin came, he said in the name of Rav Yechenen, Loikani. Regarding the case of a cow with an owner, a cow owner, and he says to a person, here, make a Kenyan in this cow, and in 30 days the Kenyan should take effect. Robin said in the name of Rav Yechenen that it does not take effect. So the Gemara answers, like Hashem, there's no contradiction. If he tells him, make the Kenyan, and then may Achshav from today, retroactively the Kenyan should take effect. So therefore, it does take effect in such a case. When he tells him, Yachshav, so right now you're making the Kenyan, today he's making the Maisa Kenyan, so retroactively the Kenyan takes effect today. But if he didn't tell him, May Yachshav, that it's going to take effect from now, retroactively, so later, in 30 days, there is no Maisa Kenyan anymore. Not the Behemoth, the Meshicha that he did is not in effect anymore. So therefore, in such a case, Rabbi Yechenin said that the Kenyan does not take effect. Okay, the Gemara finishes off this Indian, bringing from other Amiraim, that spoke about this question regarding the Yavam, whether he has the right to go and split these properties with his brothers before he does the Yibum, or the Gemara is also going to discuss how about even after he does the Yibum. <laughs> so by Menei Meula, they, they, they asked the question from Ula, Yibum v'achakachilik. If this brother, the oldest brother that has the mitzvah of Yibum, did the Yibum, and now he divides the properties. Ma, what's the Allah? Does he have the ability, does he have the right to divide the properties? So he answered, but he did is worthless because all of the properties are Meshubah to the Ksubah. That's the special Allah by a Yevama, that all the properties that are brought in from her old husband become Meshubah to the Ksubah. It's still Meshubah. Again? It's still Meshubah. It's still Meshubah. Correct. Even after he sold it to his brothers, it's, it's still Meshubah. Correct. So the, what that means is, though, that the sale doesn't take effect. That's what it means. They can use it. They can have no, but because it's Meshubit, he doesn't have the right to sell it in the first place. That's what the Gemara is saying. What happens if he first divided the properties with his brothers, and then he does the mitzvah of Yibum? Does he have the ability to do to divide it before the Yibum? So he says, but he does, it's worthless. 
It's not even his yet, Bachlal. He didn't, he didn't even do Yibum yet. So on this, the Gemara asks, Maska for Rav Sheshes. Rav Sheshes asks, why do they have to ask both of these questions? Mm-hmm. If he did first the Yibum. So he already owns these properties to some extent, even though it's Meshubah to the Ksuba. But still, we say if he divided it with his brothers, he did nothing, it's worthless. If he split these properties for his brothers before he did Yibum, when he doesn't even own it yet. So needless to say that it doesn't take effect at all. So the Gemara answers, you're right, Shnei Maisim Havu. This question was not asked together, one after the other. It was two different times, two different stories that happened, and they asked him the halacha, one without connected to the other. Achiyasa Ravin, Omer Lakish. Ravin said in the name of Rish Lakish, Bein Yibim Vachika Chilek, whether there was first Yibum and then he divided the properties with his brothers, Bein Chilek Vachika Yibum, or first he divided properties for his brothers, and then he did the mitzvah of Yibum, Layasav Leiklom, either way, what he did does not take effect. This is the final halacha, that a Yavam has no power to divide any of the properties that he got from his brother, whether before Yibum or whether after Yibum. Going back to the Mishnah, it said, that if he's inheriting from his brother fruits that are still attached to the ground, so those fruits do not become a Shubat to the Ksuba, he can keep them. So the Gemara asks, Am I? Why could he keep them? All of the properties that comes from the brother, from the one, the, the husband that passed away, are going to be guarantors and they're meshubah to the ksuba. So how? Why does it say that the fruits attached to the ground he can keep? You have to change the gears in the Mishnah, and you have to learn that it belongs to her. It's it's uh, It's meshubah to the ksuba. And the Mishnah said, Kinsa, when a person marries his Yuvama, she now becomes like a regular wife. What is the Allah that the Mishnah means to teach with this, that she's his regular wife? Rabbi Yesi Bachanin explains. This is to say, that he divorces her with a get. At this point, he, if, he needs to, if he wants to divorce her, he just gives her a get and nothing else. And the Machzira, he can remarry her. So the Gemara explains, what does this mean? The fact that at this point he could divorce her with a get, it's obvious, he fully married her. So at this point, what else should he have to give her besides a get? So as the Gemara Ma'ad, the Taimah, I would think to say, when he marries her, the Taimah uses the expression, what does that mean? I should say that maybe the status of him being a Yavim from the beginning is still on him, and therefore, even after he marries her, it shouldn't be enough to give a get, he should have to have a get and chalitza. Kamash Mulan, that's the Chiddush over here, that once he fully marries her, he does not have to give chalitza anymore, only a get. Now there's another Chiddush here, Machzira, when it said that he could remarry her, Pshita, this is also obvious, why shouldn't he be allowed to remarry her? Says the Gemara Ma'ad, the time I would think to say, Mitzvah de Ramah Rachman Alei Avda. The Mitzvah, the Taita placed upon him to do the Mitzvah of Yibbom, that he already fulfilled. So now, uh, again, Avda, he already did it. Vahashta, take him Aleh, Be'isei Shisach. So now, to remarry her, we go back to the status that she is his brother's wife. And a brother's wife is a Yisra of Kodesh. So maybe he should be allowed to remarry her. Kamash Malon, that's why we're saying that once he marries her, she becomes like a regular wife. And even if he divorces her, he could remarry her. Says the Gemara, Maybe Taka, this should be true, that he's not allowed to remarry her. Makro, but the Pasuk says, Lokocha loyli isha. That yeah, it does take a save yivmo, but then it says, and he takes her as a wife. Kivin shalakacha. Once he marries her, nasis keishtai. She becomes his wife, and therefore he could remarry her afterwards. The ister of eishes ach is completely removed. This is a chazara from the Gemara that we learned in Masech Yavamis. Okay, let's continue. It's in the Mishnah. Bolvad sheteheik subasa al nichse bayla rishen. The ksuba comes from the money from the properties of the first husband. My time. Eh? What's the reason for this? Because Isha, this is a wife that Hashem has acquired to him, that Hashem has given to him from heaven. And therefore, he doesn't have to write a ksuba for that. It's not his obligation. So it comes from the money of the first husband. But, if there isn't properties and money from the first husband for the ksuba, so then she will get from the, from the Yavam, the second husband, he's going to have to provide for her. Because this is one of the reasons of the Ksuba, that it shouldn't be light in the husband's eyes to just send her off with nothing. So therefore, he's going to have to provide for her Ksuba. Then the Mishnah said, 
You shouldn't say it to her, here, take this bundle of money on the table, and this is Yiksube, and the rest of the properties are not Meshube to the Yiksube. And the Mishnah says that's true regarding a Yavam and a Yavama, and it's also true regarding a husband and wife. And the Mishnah says, V'chein, it's so too by a husband and wife. So the Gemara asks, my V'chein, what does this expression of V'chein mean in the Mishnah? Ma, the time I would think to say, Hosam would do like of law, the Kanoi, the Kanino. When it comes to Yavam and Yavama, because he doesn't have to write a new Ksobe, she gets everything from the properties of the previous husband. So he never wrote to her that whatever I have acquired and whatever I will acquire will be Meshubet to your Ksobe. So therefore, if he places a bundle of money on the table and says, here, this is, this is for you, for the Ksobe, so she gets very worried. She gets very worried for that, that in case I lose this from any of the other properties, I can't take anything. When it comes to a regular marriage of husband and wife, the Kosov law, he writes a Riksobe. And in the Ksuba it says, the Kanoi, whatever I have acquired, with the Kanina, and whatever I will acquire, it will be Meshubah to the Ksuba. Same as some Chadaita. So I should say, even if he's designating now this money for the Ksuba on the table, nevertheless, she relies on the fact that she can take from anything else. Kamash Malam, that's the Chiddush, that a person should not do this, because once you designate this money, she does not rely on collecting from anything else. Gersha, if he divorces her, Ein Subasa. This is talking about the Yavama. If the Yavam divorced the Yavama, so now what does she get from all the properties that the Yavam got from her first husband? She only collects the money of Riksuba. So what's the Chidashe? What's this Mishnah teaching? So the Gemara explains, Gersha in. If he divorces her, so then she only gets the, the value of Riksuba from the properties. But like Gersha, if he did not divorce her, like, so then she has a Shibud on all other properties and the husband can't sell anything. What's the Chiddush here? Kamash Malon This extra line of the Mishnah is teaching us what we taught before in Abrais in the name of Rababe that a husband, a, yav, a, yav, a Yavam that is, cannot sell any of the properties that it came from the first husband because it's all Meshubit to the Ksubit. If you remember the Brais that they said he's going to have to appease her or he maybe could divorce her and marry her again. So that's what we could see over here from this line in the Mishnah. Then the Mishnah said, if the Yavam remarries her, Harei Kechol Anoshim, She's like every wife, and all she gets now is the ksuba of the previous marriage, which means he doesn't have to write a new ksuba, but she gets from the previous marriage, the ksuba. So the Gemara asks on this, What's Yeah, it's talking about a Yavama. So the question is, What's the Chiddush of regarding this halacha when he remarries her? That she gets the previous ksuba, and he doesn't write a new ksuba. Tanina, this is a Mishnah here, later in the Masechta. A person divorces his wife, and then he remarries her. So automatically what this means is, it's with the condition that the previous ksuba comes back into effect, that's, that's the condition that he remarries her. So the same thing should apply over here by a Yavama that the Yavam divorced and now he remarries her. Why should this be any different? So the Gemara explains, no, there would be a Svara that it's different. Now, the time, I would think to say, only by a person's wife, who, over there you say, the Iyu Kosov Laksuba Minei, he, the husband, did write a Ksuba from him that he's giving his wife. So therefore, if he divorces her and remarries her, she gets that Ksuba that he wrote for her. Ah, but Yevimtoi, when it comes to a Yevame, the La Iyu Kosov he never wrote her a Ksuba. She gets the Ksuba from the properties of the first husband that died. So Heche de Gersheva Hadra, so if he divorced her and remarries her, Eime Ksubasa Minei, so maybe now he does have to write a new Ksuba for her. Mashmalon, that's the Chiddush, that he does not have to write a new Ksuba for her. It's not the same thing, because he was earning all the money from the Yom. Right, correct. So, and, so, What's the difference? But he himself, <coughs> never, maybe now, if it's a new marriage, so now it's not a continuation anymore of the Mitzvah of Yibum, so now he does have to write a new Ksuba himself, because now it's his marriage, it's not anymore a Mitzvah of Yibum. Why is there no difference? He, he has to give the same amount of money? No, but, but uh, yeah, <laughs> true, and the Hanami... Okay, Before but the question is, do you have to write a nuksub? That's just a question whether you have to write a nuksub or not. Amar Rav Yudin. Now, the Gemara says a very <laughs> general subject regarding all ksubis. So Rav Yudin said, but Yishayna, in the beginning, when a person marries his wife, so for Absula, he would write her Messiah. He would write her that here, I'm, gi I'm giving you 200 zuz that you collect the ksubah from it. And for an almana, he would write her money that I'm giving you an almana for the ksubah. But there was no properties, there was nothing, there was no shibud and anything other than this money that the husband said that he's giving. But what happened? No wife wanted to get married. No woman that is wanted to get married. And these men were getting old. And they weren't marrying wives. 
עד שבא שם בן שטח, אין תושם בן שטח קיים ותיקן, and he instituted כל נכוסה ואחראי אין לקסובוסה. That it's not just money that a person says I'll give you, because that our wife doesn't necessarily rely upon. She says what happens if the money's not here anymore. And he was misakin that the properties that the person owns become subjugated for collecting the ksobe. So now they can get married because they know, these women know they can rely on this. Tani Rami Yochi, we learned this in the Braise as well, and the Braise says more details in how the halacha of the ksuba developed. But he's showing on the beginning, they would write the money that they give for a basula 200, for an almana, one mana. And the men were getting old and they couldn't get married. The wives didn't want to rely on this. His skin so they instituted that this money that the husband says he's going to give for the ksube, so we're going to put that money aside and make sure that it's not going to get lost or used up. So they took that money and they placed it into the woman's house, into her father's house, so the money is there. It's being safeguarded, kept if he has to give her the ksube money. Vadayin, and still this was a problem, because if he got angry at her, so in his eyes, it's very easy to divorce her. Oymelah, he just says to her, gives her a get, and he says, I don't have to give you any money, go to your father's house, you already have the money of the ksuba over there. So in the husband's eyes, that money of the ksuba, he's not losing anything. He doesn't have the money, it's already in the father's house there, and he, 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 it was very light in his eyes to divorce his wife. Hiskino, so then they instituted they should place this money designated for the ksube in the house of the father-in-law. In other words, which means in the house of the husband. That he should see this money is there and he's losing something when he has to divorce his wife. So what happened? Ashiris Isa Isa Kalsais. The Ashiris, so rich women, which got a lot of ksuba money, not only the basic ksuba, but the additions that the husband added to the ksuba. So what would they do? They would use this ksuba money and they would make for themselves kalsis, shalkesa, vishalzav, these baskets as kind of hair coverings from silver, from gold. Aniyais, and the poor women that got a small ksuba, hoya isis isa, of it shall me meraglayim. They made it as a bowl to be used for, for meraglayim, to urinate. So, Vadayim, what still happened is, the husband felt like, I'm not going to have, I have no use of this money that I put aside here anyways, because Shekai when he got angry at his wife, Allah, he would tell her, here, take the, the, the money that then you bought this thing for yourself, just take it for yourself and go out. So again, it was not something that was uh, hard for him to divorce his wife. Ah, Chuba Shimon ben Shatach, until Shimon ben Shatach came, the Tikkin, and he instituted Shihe Kaisav law that he writes in the Ksube, Kol Nuchase Achra on the all of my properties are achroi, are, are responsible to pay for the ksobe, so he didn't, you don't designate anything specific. So now the husband thinks twice before he divorces his wife because she can come and collect from any of the properties that he owns. That's the, the way, this the history of how the shibud of the ksobe developed. Hadron, Allah, Isha, the conclusion of the eighth Pedic, Pedic Isha, Mesech the